I'm here to correct something, and that is the comments that I've been getting on a previous video that's doing pretty well about how to add halation to your videos. However, what I was actually teaching was how to add bloom to your videos, and I used the wrong word because I wasn't educated enough. So, re-educated myself. I've properly learned what halation was. I learned what bloom was. I'm going to break it down for you in this video, and then also cherry on top, teach you how to do both and combine the looks so you get that really nice blurry true halation. Halation is that red glow, not just a glow, the red glow, the reddish orange glow that happens around the blown out highlights of an image on film only, 16 and or 35 millimeter film to be more specific. Halation is the red haloing that goes around, you know, light sources like I mentioned, but bloom is like that blurriness of the halation. They usually pair together from my experience, and once again, I'm only sharing what I know. Let's combine them, see what they look like, and how they affect our footage, and how you can, in Premiere Pro, do it to your own footage. Because I think that's really the goal at the end of the day. Who cares what it's called? We want the look that I'm referring to. So let's dive into Premiere. Okay, so to get started, I have this first clip here. I have another clip that's pretty similar, you know, same room, same time. And then I have a very different clip, which is outside. I've already color graded uh, all three shots. You know, you can tell if I turn off the effects. I've colored it, I've corrected the lighting. That being said, we're gonna go ahead and start with the actual true meaning of halation. And we're gonna talk about what that looks like and how you apply it. So since we're gonna do it to all three clips, hold Alt or Option, select them and click and drag above will duplicate the layer. Simple as that. We've already done that in the past video. If you've watched it, you'll know what I'm doing here. Now that you duplicated the layer, we can actually go ahead and go to our project panel. I've already made one, but if you haven't made one, hover down here on new item, adjustment layer, press enter, then you'll have one. You can take your adjustment layer and I'm gonna throw it on top of just this clip because we're only working with this one at the moment. Now, under adjustment layer, click it, go to effects, type in channel blur because we're again, we're going to only want a red halation or red highlight, if you would, on the image. So channel blur allows us to access the red, green, and blue channels of the image. Go ahead, take the red blurriness. I'm gonna put it to like 50. 50 doesn't always work for everything, but in this case, 50 seems to work decently for this shot. However, you'll also notice if I press the tilde key, there's also blue highlighting. And that looks really bad. Also, that looks like you're watching like a weird 3D movie, not in 3D, it just doesn't look right. It's not a VHS look, we're going for a film look. So, go ahead to your opacity under blend mode, click normal, drop it down and go to lighten. You'll notice immediately when I click it, the blue goes away. I'll press the tilde key again. And now we only have a red highlighting on the highlights, which is once again, halation. What we actually want is a red highlight there. If I want to add the bloom and really, you know, get creative with it and get that look in there as well, I'll go ahead and go to my effects control again, type in a Luma key as we did in the last video, make sure this is selected. You can go ahead and just double click it, double click it. You'll see that in the selected effects control panel, Luma key is now there. And then we're going to go ahead and type in Gaussian blur. Once again, Gaussian blur, click it, it's there. Now I like to stick to these numbers. You don't have to. Really what you're doing is just masking out part of the image. So if I turn off this bottom layer real quick, and this is something I didn't go over in the past video, you'll notice it gets really dark here and that's okay. I'm actually gonna turn off the halation layer as well so we can really just isolate the shot. And if you notice, I see the cutoff here is at 0%. If I drag the cutoff up, you'll notice it starts to mask out sections of the footage that won't be there. White will be what is going to have the effect applied and uh, black will not have the effect applied. So, you know, we can, move both sliders around the threshold and the cutoff. Once again, I like my cutoff going to 80 and my threshold going to about 88. I fluctuate depending on the shot, but that's pretty much what I do. Then from there, boringness, maybe I'll go 75 for this shot. Looks like a little bit much, so how about 60? And I'll turn that bottom layer, the original layer that has nothing done to it except color grading on. And you'll notice, okay, there's a lot of bloom, a little bit too much bloom. So once again, let's back it off to about 40. And I can also change my opacity to about 80%. Now, if I just toggle this layer on and off, you know, there's a nice softness to the edges, which is what we want. Let's go ahead and turn our halation layer back on, the adjustment layer, which it is on. You notice it takes a couple seconds sometimes. And there we are. A halated and bloomed shot. You know, if I turn off all the effects, we had this, then I color graded, of course, and now we have this. And we're gonna do this two more times just so you get the grip of it. Once again, let's go to the new shot. I'm gonna delete what we have here. 
Let's go to this new shot. First and foremost, we want to drag our adjustment layer on top of the footage. This is where our Harlation effect is going to go. Hover over effects here. Once again, type in channel blur. That is what causes the red halation to be accessible. Um, go under obsolete, channel blur, click and drag or double click it, red blurriness. Let's bring it up to about 70, really push our limits this time around. Now we see that blue glow, not what we want, right? So let's go ahead and go to normal under our opacity, change it to lighten. You'll see that red blue area go away. There we go, now it's just red and I can turn this on and off so you can really see the effect, perfect. And now let's add the bloom. Click the layer below that, the duplicated layer. Go ahead, back to our effects, type in Luma Key, type in Gaussian Blur. Now that they're both here, let's go ahead and 88, 84-ish I think is okay for this shot. And then let's go 100 and just see how far we can push this. And we'll dial it down from there. Okay, so now we see the effect of the Luma Key and the Gaussian Blur. It might be a little too strong for you. For me, I think it is a little too strong. So let's go to 70 with it. And then I'll turn it on and off again. I don't really want this shot being too glowy. Once again, it's a very quick color grade. If I really took my time, you can add so much to it. And in fact, what I think I wanna go ahead and do is actually throw some grain on top of there. So I'm gonna double click in my project panel, find out where I saved my grain to. I have grain here under my video assets folder. Let's go ahead and import that grain clip, click and drag it on top. And now it doesn't stretch the whole length. So, you know, in theory, I would just place it to the beginning of there, click, alt, hold, and extend it, you know, then shrink it down and cut it to size. Um, that being said, let's go ahead and select both of those, nest them together. So now we're working with one clip. Go to our effect controls panel while the nested grain sequence is applied. Take that grain and let's go to about overlay. So now if you can't tell, this is halation. This is bloom applied to our original shot. If I turn on and off the effects, the grain will still be there because it was a video layer, but and the nice thing about this effect is that I like both the halation amount and the grain. So I can go ahead and click Alt and just copy those onto the new shot, right? And this new shot's very different, remember, it's outside. But you can immediately see that if I press the tilde key, halation is applied. It just might be a little too much for this shot. So let's go back, grab our halation layer. Let's drop it to about 40%. You know, I think, I think that's okay, but I think I even wanna do one step further and go to my opacity drop it to about 50% because remember it's outside. You wouldn't get as much halation, you know, especially on the trees as you might with the lights, but there's a slight, and I mean just a slight amount of halation to this shot that I personally think does it some good. From here, we can go ahead and select that original copied layer. Go to our effects once again, Luma key first as always, then Gaussian blur, threshold, cut off, let our shot do its thing and then see what that effect looks like when it applies itself. You can see it's coming here really nicely. I think we can afford to do more. So let's go like 70, really see how far we can push that effect. You'll notice that especially in this blown out area, you have a nice glow to your footage. And then we can kind of go back and forth and play with it until we find something that we works for us. And that's my shot. So I'll play it on the screen real quick so you can see what each shot looks like when it's fully exported and everything's you know rendered out on it. And that's that, that's both halation, bloom, and the actual meanings behind both of them and how to use them on your own footage and how to give your footage that nice film look. I'm not calling this film look because there's a lot more we could be doing, but this is a correct tutorial on what halation really is and then what bloom really is as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this clarified some things and cleared things up for those of you who have left those comments. I appreciate you leaving them. I appreciate you putting me in my place and you know reminding me that, hey, you're wrong, it's cool, you know, it's perfectly fine. If you're wrong, correct this, you know, don't give people wrong information and I perfectly agree and I'm happy that you have left those. Thank you, thank you guys for watching as well. I hope you enjoyed. So let me know what you wanna see and what you don't know, what you wanna know. And I'll be sure to get to it. Thank you guys so much for 1,500 subscribers. Um, I feel like a month ago, I thank you for 500 subscribers. Uh, in the past week, I've gained up like 600 subscribers. It's been nuts, it's been wild. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you guys so much for your support. So we will be back awfully soon with my 15 millimeter lens or 15 to 30 zoom. I love this wide, super wide. I know no one likes it, but I love the super wide. Okay, that's that. It is hot in here with all these lights.